Okay guys, now here's what you're going to do. You'll take a, a wet wipe and wipe down your, you know, try to get off as much of the contaminants as you can. You'll take a gray scotch brite. You're going to cut it to the length of the crankshaft. And you'll take a little bit of super, super lube or WD-40 or some kind of lubricant. Just spray a little in there. You don't need a lot. You'll take this. You're going to wrap it around here. You'll take your black tape. You'll get it in there and then you're going to overlap it onto itself so it kind of holds it in there. You don't have to hold it in there for long. And now, I didn't show this in the beginning, but this is a, just a regular old cargo strap uh, that you use. You know, it's a ratcheting cargo strap. And you'll pull this around like this, loop it onto itself, give yourself plenty of um, material to work with, get them level, and then just back and forth. Go this way, go that way a little bit. Now, I usually do this for about uh, 60 seconds, I'll go 30 seconds and then I'll stop. And then you just pull it out. Then we'll take the black tape off. And we'll look. Now, you can turn that over and use the other side, but it's going to eventually get caked up with uh, a little bit of the metal. Uh, so, typically what I do is I just cut a whole another piece. I don't reuse them on the next one. And then what we'll do is we'll take an alcohol wipe or you can use some carb cleaner and just spray it down real good. Now don't forget once you do this you're gonna have to take a brush and go in through your oilers right there. Um, so wrap that down and then uh, grab yourself a microfiber, microfiber cloth and just come in here wipe it down real good now that ain't polished but like I said this crank is really just dirty um, this was the coating that they put on it when they shipped it and it sat on the floor over here it was upright and everything but it just sat there for uh, a long time over a year and this is paint splattered dirt debris and everything has gotten into the crank so I'm not looking to take off a ton of material on the crank and I know the job was pretty good from the factory but uh, let me get up close to that let me pull you off and maybe we can focus on it and see uh, you could run that as is right now and it took you know 60 seconds like I said to do that let me see if it'll focus it really has a hard time it takes it a minute Yeah, that's the surface we've got right there and that's just with the 600 cleaning uh, cleaning it up now if your crank is worse off than that you know the process now you see the quality that, uh, quality that you're gonna get now that's not polished but for the most part you could run that that would be fine um, to run on but if you want to take it to the next level which is what most people are going to do now. If you had uh, a whole lot of stuff that you could fill in there, most guys will start off with a 400. They'll go 400, 600, um, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, all the way up. Uh, and then they'll use some kind of polish. They uh, usually use that Brasso polish that you get and they'll put it on a piece of leather. That's what we got the leather here for. Uh, they'll put it on a piece of leather, get that leather in there and just cut it like I just did and I'll put some polish in there and we could do that right now but we'll uh, let me cut a piece of this we'll, we'll just run it up higher because that's in pretty good condition and we'll polish just that one journal real quick uh, with, for our backyard polish here I went ahead and grabbed a piece of 2000 grit put it on there it's uh, lubed up we use the uh, super lube and a little piece of black tape and we're gonna go for 
this and we'll just wrap this in here now this is the first time I've done this so um, this strap here I did run into another youtuber um, who does did, has a very good video on backyard polishing um, but what he used was automatic transmission fluid and that's probably really a good choice to use um, I think it'd probably be better all around if you didn't have it I mean you could use just regular motor oil um, but the automatic transmission fluid is really high in detergent and that's what he said uh, but I, I agree it and it lubes really well it's a really good lubricant but I hate it so I hate the smell of it the texture of it all that um, now with this higher grit we can sit here and work it a little bit longer and we're not going to hurt anything so like I said you know go a full 60 seconds I'm not going to sit here for 60 seconds and do this and let y'all watch because that's kind of boring but um, you get the picture you go ahead and go through there take your strap put it over here and then take off your black tape and then your paper which like I said I discard it and just cut a new piece um, every time because it's easier than to clean you can clean it but if you're really on a budget clean it you know spray it out and do that you just take you some These are just 100% alcohol wipes that I got at the dollar store. And you'll just wipe it down. This would be good to do anytime you buy anything that's new. Um, it's always good to, to inspect it and clean it real good. Um, anyhow so you know if you had bought this and after you washed it it's better to wash this stuff off when it's kind of fresh because and I'm using a microfiber here I also got these at the uh, family dollar down the street and as you can see it's starting to, to shine up a little bit better than it was and I didn't do it very long um, just what y'all seen so let me do it for 60 seconds and then we'll go ahead to the next stage and we'll see what it looks like. That's just 2000, I ran it 60 seconds. That's where we're at right now. But we're not gonna stop there. So let me show you the next process. Let me get it back on the stand uh, and show you the next process and then uh, we'll see if we can get it better than that without having to go to polish yet. Okay, I showed you a close up of the, the journal. Now what we're gonna do I haven't done this yet, but um, we'll see. I think it'll work. But I have some P3000. 2000 to 3000. Let's see uh, Let's see what it does. Um, I haven't done it this way. Usually, uh, I just take the piece of leather, and I need to trim that better, but take the piece of leather, put a little bit of polish on the inside here, get it saturated, wrap it, but we'll even do that. We'll, we'll make it work. But let's see what the, the P3000 looks like. Okay, now let's look at it. I did that for a little while. Um, this is 3000 grit, so we're not really taking anything off. Let's take a look at it, see what it looks like. Um, if it's any better, really, or if we're to the diminishing results phase yet. And we'll get close to it and look at it up close with the 3000. We'll get an alcohol wipe out. Eh. I think we're to the diminishing results. I 
now we're going to have to go extreme like with the polish or something. I don't see it getting much better. I mean maybe with a five or seven thousand grit dry. I mean um, uh, polishing. I think we could see a bigger difference but just a thousand grit isn't really I don't think it's giving me much more but you could definitely call that acceptable um, and be done here and you don't even have to get any polish and get all that dirty polish out you can get it now if you do polish it even if you don't polish it you need to get a brush and uh, go through your oiler holes on your crank now let me get you over here and we'll show you this is with the 3000 grit paper now it's going to get blurry because I got it in manual but I'll try to let you guys see if I can that's uh okay that's it with uh 3000 Not quite a mirror, but it's pretty good. You could run that and you'd be fine. I could do it a little longer, which I probably will, um, guys, but this is with, you know, 60 seconds, three minutes in. I know it seems longer because the video, but it took me about three minutes to do that. And that's going from this, this dirty it up to that three minutes so let me get some work done here on this and then I'll cut you back on them we'll do a, a video on the uh, engine block over here and I'll uh, talk about that and show you what I've done okay guys uh, I went ahead and cleaned up all of the uh, journals and uh, everything I'm gonna finish polishing it tomorrow but I got kinda of tired um, it's getting late so I'm pretty much gonna show you what else I worked on and uh, but you can see the result uh, of how it turned out it looks pretty good right now you could probably run it in that and I just went, went ahead and used the Greg Scotch Bright plenty of lube and I went ahead and uh, just cleaned them up with that so far um, be sure to brush out all your oil galleries and everything, uh, your oilers, and clean them. But uh, I'm not going to worry about the rod throws. I'll polish this up later. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and cleaned everything. Now, what I did that's different, um, I gave up on the paper on this crank. Um, I had the 2000 grit paper and I ran it on this journal uh, and everything and I went ahead and uh, I just did it with the scotch bright because like I said the cranks brand new and I got these at uh, O'Reilly's um, they're uh, three P3000s and I just went ahead and hit them with that and polished it so I did a minute with the uh, gray scotch bright and I did like two two and a half minutes with just this and that's how this came out so uh, it's fine I'm just gonna run it like that it looks good um, it'll work now I gotta oil this all down uh, spray it down with some super lube but I uh, tried to wipe it down as good as I could still got the lube there and everything and I know I'm not wearing gloves and everything but I still gotta clean this and I've still got to do some more polishing so after I get it polished we'll handle it with gloves but let's go ahead and uh, Let's take a look at what else I did um, for the video. I gotta get you off the stand. Um, now we're over here. Let me click this into manual focus. These are the tools you'll need to do what I did. Um, I went ahead and used one of these uh, Walmart Hyper Tough Deburr tools rotary deburr now I went ahead and cleaned everything up and I've oiled everything down uh, for in here now I do I went ahead and cleaned the 
up all the bores again, cleaned up the block, and I did some modifications, but you'll need these tools, and I have a, uh, it's just regular rotary tools. See if that'll get in focus for you. But I had an old set of these um, just for laying around. And I used the, the stone. Now I did buy a set of these ones at Wally World, these kind of stones. And they were cheap, they were like five bucks. Now if you have an air grinder, those work pretty good. Now let me move this stuff out of the way and I'll show you what I've done to the block. Just bear with me. Put it over here on the chair. And I think I have a lot here that might work. But yeah, we have, uh, we went ahead and cleaned all those up with the hone and I cleaned up in here. Now I used a brake hone uh, inside there and I cleaned those up and now I got to take a brush and get them even more clean but yeah the cylinders are ready to go now I did some work here let me grab my chair on the block that I didn't film because it's boring <laughs> watching somebody use a burr tool for you know let me get it in focus here if I can okay we got some focus there now if you look at the front of the block here right above the cam um, that might be too much light uh, you'll see I reworked right here um, I went ahead and reworked that uh, just because the timing gear will hit it if you use a double roller so I went ahead and took the rotary tool and uh, let's see. Yeah, I took the rotary tool and uh, cleaned up right here because the timing gear will hit this if you use uh, a double roller timing gear. Now right here, if you look, I went ahead and cleaned up this. This was round and it goes into the oil gallery right here. And I went ahead and polished all of this. I just cleaned it up so that we get better oil flow when you're stopping. And uh, we, I'll probably put restrictors in this block because I don't want too much oil going down. But I went ahead and reworked it right here. Now I didn't get crazy with it guys. I didn't have a burr. Uh, a big burr tool, a long burr, uh, like a quarter inch round nose or uh, a cone nose burr tool or I could have went more extreme but like I said I just wanted to clean that stuff up. These are little mods that you can do when you have free time and I went ahead and cleaned it all the way up down there but you can do this stuff in your free time. Now that being said There's another mod, there's actually quite a few grinding mods I did. I had to wash this block because I had to get all of the, uh, you can see, I got a little bit of surface rust right there. But I went ahead and cleaned this out. You can hog this out a lot more if you've got a, a, a burr, a big and a powerful die grinder. I don't happen to have one right now, but I went ahead and got as much as I could with the Dremel. I went ahead and cleaned that up and I just used a, uh, high speed carbide cutter that I have and I went ahead and cleaned that up and uh, went ahead and polished this right here and then this is the area where you want to clean up here too uh, and sand it flush you want all that oil to come back now I got oil in my hand uh, and then up here let me see if I can grab my lot um, up here in this area I went ahead and hogged that out too. Now, the thing that's interesting about uh, the Chevy, you can take almost all this out. You can reach in here and you can feel. This is the important area, the back, because the oil will bounce off this. But if you look down in there, you can actually see it goes all the way down in there. Now you can take, and I tried to clean that up as much as I could with my little burr, 
and round that out to make the oil flow back better. Um, I'll keep you in focus. But yeah, you can, uh, right here, you can just tap these and uh, put a uh, plug in them. I don't have, I don't remember the size now, but you can go ahead and tap them and put a, a, a little half inch plug or whatever. Goes in there and drill a 16th inch hole. And as long as you recess them, then you'll still get a little bit of oil down in there, but it's dramatically reduced. That would be kind of um, more of a roller cam kind of situation and a race situation where you don't want any of this oil coming down. It hits the cam, lubes up the cam real good and uh, everything, but it falls right on the uh, crankshaft and that loses, you lose windage. You can, you can gain power that way, but I'm not really looking for that. I just wanted to clean this up. I like to have a better oiling system because longevity is important on one of these engines. Now let me see if I can roll it with one arm <clears throat> to the next place. Okay, so I gotta get that. Uh, sorry guys, I'm walking all over the place. Now the next area that I did a modification and I'm trying to keep y'all in focus and like I said, use this camera but I do like the quality I wish y'all guys would comment on that and tell me if y'all like the quality too um, right here if you look here's what I've done right there on that one I went ahead and uh, clean that up and tried to uh, round it and port it so the oil goes in there. If you look down into that one, I've done the same thing there. I mean, I know this isn't the best work in the world, but it's what I had, uh, I could accomplish with the Dremel. Now this feeds <coughs> the main cap. All your oiling goes through here, uh, right through these holes right here. It goes all the way up into here, if you guys are uh, aware of that. So what you do, hold on, is you take your cap. I'm just setting this up here, guys. This isn't how you install it. Um, what you can do, uh, if you're so inclined, is you can go ahead and port this too. This is for your oil pump. And as you can see, I went ahead and ported that. And I went down in there and kind of make the transition uh, better. But these are just little mods you can do if you got a Dremel in time. And uh, this should actually help your uh, your oil flow and everything. Let me uh, get this all in focus again. So, these are just some little mods. Like I said, I showed you what's going on. I think the block's pretty much ready for uh, assembly and everything. I went ahead and cleaned it. Now something to be mindful mindful of is when you're cleaning, if you don't have a hot tank and you're not gonna hot tank the block, when you hone those cylinders, it's gonna create this sticky, oily dust. Uh, so it's a good idea to take a brush and soap and really clean the block. You don't have to hot tank it, but you know, it probably, if you had it, you could do it. Now I've still gotta do some more touch up painting. I did deburr the outside of the block too. I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat of this uh, Chevrolet orange that I mixed up, this Rust-Oleum Chevrolet orange that I mixed, and I'll go ahead and touch the block up. But I'm pretty much done here other than maybe putting those oil restrictors in there. Uh, and now I'm just waiting on pistons and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish this crank, get a new rear main seal, go ahead and try to get this crank specced in and plastic gauged and everything in this block and we'll start moving forward. Now I do have the, I have cam bearings, but uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a video of a specific video to put those in so y'all guys can see how those go in uh, The way you clock them and everything it's it's There's a lot of videos on the internet that confuse you, but I'm just gonna show you exactly how you're supposed to But uh, anyway guys like always uh, please like subscribe hit the bell notification icon and uh, God bless guys